Hello and welcome to the Bariatric Surgery Orientation of the Bariatric and Metabolic Institute of Cleveland Clinic, Florida. In the next 30 minutes, you will learn more about bariatric surgery. Our mission statement is to provide a comprehensive and multidisciplinary approach to treat obesity and its related comorbidities. Our team consists of three surgeons, Dr. Rosenthal, Dr. Shomstein, and myself, Dr. Lomenzo, three junior partners, so we can cover all your needs 24 seven, two full-time nutritionists, three bariatric nurses, two office coordinators, one full-time insurance specialist, and one hospital coordinator. Obesity is a multifactorial problem where genetics, behavior, and environmental factors play a significant role. Obesity is defined based on the body mass index, usually above 35 or 40. Inactivity, unhealthy hitting behaviors, lack of sleep, medical diseases and syndrome, and genetic components are the most common factors. BMI or body mass index is a calculation that take into consideration both the height and the weight of a patient. Obesity impacts individuals on several different levels, from a social standpoint, from an economical standpoint, and more importantly, from a medical standpoint, with increase in coronary artery disease, increase in stroke, diabetes, and even mortality. The effects of obesity are encompassing head to toe. Every single system in our organism is affected by obesity. And there are even specific cancers that are a lot more common in patients that are obese as opposed to patients that are not obese. The benefits of weight loss in particular is to decrease and lowering the risks of developing the most common diseases such as cardiac disease, stroke, high cholesterol, type two diabetes, high blood pressure, joint problems, liver disease, sleep apnea, cancers, gynecological problem, and erectile dysfunction. The improvements after weight loss are at a different level. The energy increases, increased mobility, better self-esteem, breathing, blood sugar, and even survival in patients affected by diabetes type 2. There are several methods of losing weight. However, historically, diet, exercise, and behavioral changes have led to very poor results, and they're not very long-lasting. The addition of medications can increase the success of weight loss. However, increases also the potential complications and side effects of the medications themselves. And also the durability has been questioned. Today, it's known that weight loss surgery is the only long lasting remedy uh, for weight loss. The surgical process consists of an intake seminar, the one that you're now um, participating to on the web, and then two face-to-face -face visits with the surgeon. During the first visit, called the new patient visit, you will be screened to see if you're a candidate for any of these procedures. We will talk about in details uh, the different options available to you, we will explore the financial and insurance requirements, review your medical history, physical examination, in order to determine whether or not you can be a good candidate. It's important that you stop smoking, not only for health purposes, but also for insurance purposes. At this time, your surgeon uh, might request specific tests in preparation for the surgery. During your second visit, called the preoperative visit, you will go over all the uh, consultations and tests that have been previously ordered in order to make sure that you are healthy enough to undergo these procedures. All your questions will be answered 
and of course risks and benefits of these procedures will be once again discussed. At the same time, you will meet the anesthesiologists. During the day of surgery, you will be admitted to the uh, ambulatory care unit. An IV will be started and you will begin some antibiotics and also you will have an injection of a blood thinner. After everything is ready for surgery, you will be taken to the operating room. Your family will be waiting in the waiting area and they will be contacted directly by the surgeon at the end of the operation. All these procedures are usually done laparoscopically, meaning with minimal invasive techniques, and usually under two hours. In recovery, you're going to be spending one or two hours, and then you will be going to a regular hospital ward for one or two days. The total time out of work will be anywhere between two and three weeks. We encourage you to be active when you come home, you will not be able to drive until you're off any pain medications and you feel comfortable with all the movements that are necessary in order to be safe. And you shouldn't be lifting anything over 15 or 20 pounds for a full month. Follow up after surgery is the key. This is a lifelong commitment. You're encouraged to see us two weeks after surgery, two months after surgery, six months after surgery, and then on a yearly basis. During these appointments, you will be requested to have some blood work in order to monitor your vitamin levels. So the um, amount of vitamins and supplements that you take can be adjusted accordingly. We also encourage you to participate to our support groups where people that have had the surgery and at the different stages of their recovery and people that are thinking about having surgery get together and they discuss about all the issues concerning bariatric surgery. Our support group is the first Monday of each month between 9 and 11 a.m. and the last Monday of each month between 4 and 7 p.m. We also advise you to exercise regularly and this is an important part of your weight loss process. A daily exercise of 30 to 45 minutes is ideal. The best exercises are the aerobic activities, such as walking, jogging, swimming, biking, water aerobics, but also weight training is good for your health. What procedures are available? There's two types of procedures that can be done. One in which we only restrict the size of your stomach in order to decrease the amount of food that you can ingest at any given time. And the second type in which we decrease the amount of food that your intestine can absorb. The second time is called malabsorptive. A third type combines some of the restriction with some of the malabsorption. All these procedures are performed laparoscopically, which means with multiple small incisions through which we put small cannulas and small instruments. The procedure is done similarly to the open uh, uh, incisions. However, the small incisions allow for a decrease in hospital stay, a faster recovery, less pain, a reduced chance of wound problem, in particular wound infections and hernias, and less scarring, both on the outside and on the inside. The first procedure that we will be discussing is a, a restrictive procedure, meaning a procedure in which the size of the stomach is reduced by implanting a medical device called the adjustable gastric bending. In this procedure, a man-made device is implanted in the top part of your stomach and is connected through a tube to a little disc that sits under your skin. You, don't, you do not see this disc and most of the times you don't feel it either. And the idea of the disc is to being able to adjust the size of the ring that it's around your top part of your stomach, which means that this procedure requires multiple follow-ups because the bend needs to be adjusted to the correct uh, size. Usually takes four adjustments for the first year, maybe one or two in the second year, and also some adjustments uh, later on as maintenance. There is a lot of variability in the results of this procedure. 
and overall the expected weight loss is usually between 30 and 35 percent of your excess weight the advantages is that we're not removing anything we're not rewriting your intestine the band can be adjusted the band can be removed however there's some scarring left behind even after removal so your anatomy is not reversed 100 percent like it was before and it's a quick procedure usually this is a 23-hour hospital stay the disadvantages is that the weight loss is very variable it requires a lot of your strong will to make sure that you're compliant with all the rules uh, to be successful you need regular adjustments and regular follow-ups and of course, you're implanting a medical device in a foreign body that has potential for infections and other complications. The second procedure is the sleeve gastrectomy or gastric sleeve. In this procedure, we physically remove approximately 70 to 80 percent of your stomach, the part of the stomach that is highlighted in the lighter pink, leaving the stomach into a, a shape of a banana very uh, narrow and long and this serves two purposes number one reduces the amount of stomach available for nutrients which means that you can only eat so much at any given time and the second benefit of this procedure is that uh, most of the hormones that have to do with make people hungry and also uh, facilitate the diabetes are made in the part of the stomach that is, that is removed as a consequence after this type of procedure there is a significant change in the uh, intestinal hormones that are a benefit for weight loss and uh, uh, diabetes resolution this is a simpler operation of gastric bypass there is no need to reroute your intestine we're not implanting any device the weight loss is quite rapid um, usually about 60 percent of your excess weight and it takes about one or two hours in surgery of course, the disadvantage is that this is a permanent operation. Once we remove that part of the stomach, we cannot make it grow back. Although we can change this procedure into something else, such as gastric bypass. And of course, cannot be adjusted. The third procedure is what's considered still the gold standard of the operations, is the laparoscopic through and wide gastric bypass. These procedures combine the restrictions and the benefit of the reduced absorption of nutrients or malabsorption. Since there are two separate mechanisms that help you with the weight loss, we expect to have a better weight loss than with the other procedures, usually anywhere between 70 and 75% of the excess weight. In the first part of the operation, we create a small pouch out of the stomach, which will be your new stomach. Uh, usually it's the volume of an egg. That, of course, provides the restrictions, which means that you can only eat so much at any given time. In the second part of the procedure, by rerouting part of your intestine, we make sure that some of the food that you ingest does not get directly in touch with the uh, uh, enzymes that are necessary to absorb the nutrients. So part of the food is not readily digested or absorbed. As a consequence, you have a better effect for weight loss. The rest of the stomach that is not in contact with your mouth anymore stays behind but is perfectly viable and can be used in the future if necessary although this is a, a the gold standard of the operation certainly has more steps and potential more uh, issues although it can be performed very safely this is the procedure in that has the longest experience and the longest research uh, uh, data available the weight loss is uh, rapid it takes one or two hours uh, again and has a high rate of resolution of the comorbidities the disadvantages of this procedure is that uh, there's intestinal rerouting and as such potential issues with hernias in the future with ulcers in the future um, part of the digestive tract is bypass there's a slightly higher chance of having mineral and vitamin deficiencies and once again taking the mineral and vitamins is uh, part of your lifelong commitment of these processes you can have dumping syndrome which is a protective mechanism and in a way it's your insurance uh, uh, policy 
because it's a way of your body to tell you that you just ate something that you were not supposed to. As a consequence, um, you have cramps in your abdomen, you need to sit down, you feel like you're having uh, either diarrhea or vomiting, and it's an uncomfortable feeling, but not a dangerous one. Also with this procedure, similar to the sleep gastrectomy, there is a significant change of the hormones inside the intestine uh, that have benefit not only in decreasing the appetite, but also in uh, resolution of some of the comorbidities, diabetes in particular. This is a chart that compares side to side the three procedures. As we discussed before, the gastric bending is the only one in which we implant a medical device. Uh, the length of stay uh, is 23 hours for an adjustable gastric bending, one or two days for the sleep gastrectomy, and two to three days for the gastric bypass. The weight loss is higher for the gastric bypass, followed by the gastric sleeve, and then the gastric bend. The mortality rate is similar in the three procedures. The reversibility of the procedures is uh, easy for the band, although we already mentioned that we remove the band, but we don't reverse all the changes that have occurred. The bypass can be reversed, although it takes a, a, a little bit of a bigger surgery, and the sleep gastrectomy cannot be reversed. Over the 15 years uh, at the uh, Bariatric and Metabolic Institute of the Cleveland Clinic, Florida, we have performed more than 6,000 of these operations. And as you can see, the breakdown of the operations is uh, uh, depicted. Today, we do perform more sleeve gastrectomy, followed by gastric sleeve and very few gastric bands. Acute surgical complications have to do with wound infections, hemorrhage, injury to the organs around the stomach, in particular the spleen, the esophagus, the stomach itself, the possibility of developing blood clots in the legs, and then if some of the, those blood clots break off and uh, travel all the way to the lung, they become pulmonary embolisms, and they're a very severe and significant uh, source of morbidity, but also uh, people can uh, suddenly die from one of the pulmonary embolisms. So that's the reason why the prevention is the key. And of course, uh, leaks around the staple lines or the anastomosis, meaning the hookup of the intestine and the stomach. Later on, a lot of people have some degree of constipation. There could be narrowing at the level of the hookups between the stomach and the intestine or within the uh, sleeve itself, obstruction of the intestine because of the rerouting of the intestine that is necessary for the uh, uh, Roux-en-Y gastric bypass, ulcers, blood clots that develop later on, gallstone formation, the dumping syndrome that we already mentioned, and vitamin and protein uh, deficiencies. We do not recommend pregnancy for at least a year and a half to two years after this procedure, since your body is trying to recover from uh, this type of operations and is using all the energy necessary uh, for the weight loss. So adding an additional uh, pregnancy could be dangerous, uh, especially for the unborn ch uh, child. These procedures have excellent results. All those medical conditions that we mentioned before that are very, very prevalent in obesity tend to improve significantly or completely disappear, as you can see from this uh, uh, cartoon. The key components of success are, of course, following where the diets are, exercise regularly, come and see us on a regular basis, and, and also uh, discussing issues with our nutritionists, come to support group, and avoiding smoking and drinking. Thank you very much for your attention, and we hope to see you in our offices soon.